Okay, a lot. We're talking about the little man. Yeah, the little man, okay? So um, that little man, like Johan says in your brain, he writes down all these things that happen, all these things that happen. Eventually, your body can't cope with more stress coming in. It's like your hard drive in your brain gets filled up. Okay, so uh, it, I mean, it can cause all kinds of things happening to your brain, like memory loss, um, short-term memory loss, um, uh, um, anxiety, uh, insomnia. All of those things are beginning signs that there's something is not right in your life. If you ignore those signs, it's not going to be very long because those signs are things that shows you that, dude, something's not right in your life and it needs to be fixed. Okay, so here's the thing. Whenever you, you, you have stress in your life or you're going towards depression, okay, you, you need to kind of stop and kind of take a break and step back and decide what you can do. Because remember, you can't, um, you don't have control over everything that happens in your life, okay, but there are some things in your life you can control. And if you get to a point where you feel like you have control over nothing in your life, everything just happens to you, it doesn't matter, you know, what you, what your participation is or whatever you're trying to do or whatever it life just takes you and you don't take you, you you can't change anything okay then it's time to start deciding okay what can I do things about and what can't I do things about because some things in life you just have to accept other things in life you can change you just have to decide okay which things can I change because the first thing whenever you start getting those signs of uh, gearing towards depression is like I said the insomnia uh, your concentration goes down, and these are all mind things. It's not even your stomach's backing up. All of a sudden, you get a cold. Every cold that comes your way, you get it. Your, your immune system starts breaking down. But before your immune system starts breaking down, your brain will start showing you that, okay, I'm not on a good path here. I need to change something, right? I need to give something up, or I need to... Because uh, when you're overwhelmed a lot, when you feel overwhelmed a lot, you're very, very close to going into depression. And you have to reevaluate your life and step step back. Okay, so we've given you the signs of depression. Did I give all of them? What did we say? Well, Insomnia. You're just feeling lethargic. Yeah, you I don't mean, have it more might energy. Be such a hassle to even brush your teeth. Yeah. You get to a point where you're not even able to take care of yourself anymore. Yeah, because there's different levels of depression, right? You can have a very light depression where you're just tired all the time, and it doesn't stay there. People, the thing is, if you don't do something about where you're at, okay, it only gets worse. It, it doesn't stay there, <laughs> okay? Because your body won't cope. Your, your body won't allow you to cope. There. If you're running on adrenaline uh, permanent, okay, this is where we can go into the cortisol thing, okay? So when you're stressed out and you get a stressful s situation in your life, okay, your body um, secretes uh, um, adrenaline, right? Well, your what? Cortisol is the other stress hormone. Okay, so those are the things that's supposed to make you cope. Okay, it's a good thing because on a short-term thing, that's the thing that prevents you from burning your finger on the stove. Okay, that that flight or fight mode is okay. That's hot. I shouldn't touch it. Okay, so adrenaline and cortisol is a good thing to have for short periods of time. But if you have underlying stress for a very long period of time in your life, either work stress, school stress. Uh, whatever kind of stress marital it is, stress, marital stress. stress, any stress of any kind, in-laws, family stress, your own family stress. I mean, there's people that's bitching and complaining to me about their sisters and their whatever, and I don't have a nice sister either. So, <laughs> you know, now she's cut out of my life. So um, there's, there's things that you sometimes should do that might not make you look like a nice person, okay? But you, you, you guys, you have to be really careful when stress factors are in your life, because there's a lot of things that you can control that you don't want to control because you, you give other people, you, you want to please other people, okay? Sometimes in life you have to not please other people to get yourself out of a stressful situation. And um, it, it can, ch you know, things can change. Just because you make a decision doesn't make it necessarily a permanent um, uh, 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 permanent decision, for instance, okay? What I'm thinking about is my sister, for instance, okay? Um, we haven't spoken to each other in years, okay? We haven't spoken, actually, we didn't speak to each other since my mom passed away. And um, then I contacted her one last time after that, and that was a big whole balls up. I should never have contacted her. However, the thing is, you know, it might sound like a really evil plan to cut a person out of your life. If it's family, oh, it's blood, you know, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, what are you, what do you want to tolerate? The thing is, you're the main person that you have to take care of your sister or your mother or your whoever it is, that's, um, that stress factor in your life, they're not going to take care of you when you fall down, okay? And if you fall down, you're useless to everybody around you. 
So sometimes, you know, you can do something about it, but it's not a fun decision. It's like Johan says, okay, you get, you always get two choices, a steak and puke or um, cheesecake, cheesecake and, and poop. poop. <laughs> okay, it's never steak and, uh, uh, you know, it's never steak and poop or cheesecake and puke. No, no, no. There's always two that goes together, okay? So the main thing that you guys should do when you start seeing depression is sit down. People, grab a freaking pen and paper. I don't know if people even know what that is anymore. Start writing things down in your life, okay? Start writing down the stress factors, the people that cause you the stress, what kind of stuff they do, what it makes you feel like when they do this, and think about how you can deal with these things, okay? If you're in a work situation, for instance, like Johan was in, okay? He was in a place that was run like a freaking sweatshop, okay? They, they, the work, they didn't have enough people to work for the company. They didn't want to hire more people to work for the company because they were trying to save money. So there were all these projects that never got finished because there were six projects, two engineers, okay? And every single one of them had to do all six projects. So it's like, it's like, you know, nipping here, nipping there, nipping there. And then it's like, then they start ending up working 18 hours a day, you know, um, 40 hours a week and stuff like that. And there's never a reward to this. There's never an end. Okay. Once the one project seems to be getting going or whatever, then they pump up the next one and they get, and it's okay. Next week we'll take a break. Next week, the break never comes. Okay. So what ends up happening is you get burned out from working too much. Okay. So Johan had to reevaluate his life. We were in a really sh shitty situation because this company that he worked for was supposed to apply for our green cards, okay? So of course, you eat up all the shit, okay? Because um, you don't want to lose your green card, okay? So in the end, when Johan was at the point where he couldn't, st actually you're supposed to tell the story. I'm, I'm telling the story and you're supposed to tell it. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. So in the end, what happened was we had to make a decision, okay? Johan couldn't stand the situation at that company anymore. It's the most dysfunctional company he's ever worked for, okay? He had to make a decision. The only decision was this, okay? You either stay and you crack up and you, you know, go to a loony bin and I lose my husband. His health was going under because he could never train anymore. He couldn't freaking eat properly. Then he, his stomach didn't feel well. And then when he, he ate, it was like he was too tired. He was tired all the time. That's not a good sign. If you work for a company like that, you, what do you do? There's only, <clears throat> you always have a choice in life. Some things you don't have a choice, but most things you do have a choice, okay? The choice that you have to make to change, to get out of your depression, okay? It's not necessarily a nice one. It's like Johan says, the poop and steak or the cheesecake and puke, okay? One of those two. So we ended up, I ended up deciding and I said to Johan, listen, the, you cannot work for a company like this. I don't give a crap if we lose our green cards. We'll have to just start from scratch. You know, it's not been fun. It's not been a fun ride, okay? The whole fucking green card thing has not been a fun ride. So he was like, but if we don't get the green card, it's only maybe another 18 months. I'm like, you can't work for this company for another 18 months. They'll kill you. You'll be dead. And then I won't have a green card anyway. I'd rather have not have a green card with you than have a dead husband, okay? So he ended up finally leaving this company, working for another company. And now it's a, it, our decision, okay, has created a whole bunch of other shit for us now, okay? Because now my daughter needs to go to college and she can't get into state tuition because we don't have a green card process, blah, blah, blah. So this is what I'm telling you. You have to evaluate the things in your life that is causing the stress factors. Put the pros and cons of every decision you make, okay? If your mother-in-law is friggin' uh, putting a whole lot of stress on you, cut the bitch out, okay? But just make sure your husband agrees with you on that one <laughs> before you do, otherwise you might end up getting divorced if he clings to his mama's dress, okay? Then um, he's not a man in any case. Yeah, then he's not a man in any case. There you go. My husband will tell you that, okay? So, um... But you, you guys have to decide, this is your life, people, okay? And a lot of decisions we make in life, you, if you always make every decision in your life to please other people instead of pleasing yourself, there's something wrong with you. It's not healthy. I was just talking to Renata's friend the other night, same story. He came to me, and he's always wanting to help other people, you know, and I said to him, you know, in the end it's affecting you, because... People are abusing you. You're making a doormat of yourself. People are walking on you. They don't have respect for you. They just want to see whatever they can get from you. And one day, the people that you sell help and help and help and help all the time, when you need the help, they're going to be gone. They're not going to be there for you. It's the people that is not needy from you, not wanting stuff from you all the time, that's going to end up being the ones that when you need help one day, they're going to be the ones that's going to pat you on the back, that's going to stand by you if you're in trouble. The ones that you're always feeding into, and people, okay, it drains your whole essence of life when you are always feeding into other people. 
if you have to please the mother-in-law, please the, the teacher, please the boss, please the... You always have to please everybody else, but you don't get any um, input or yourself or appreciation or anything. There's no um, uh, satisfaction at the end of the day. No, nothing that counteracts the stress factor in your life, okay? So you have to do one of two things. You have to either learn, if you don't have coping skills, if there's something you cannot, really cannot change. Most things in life you can change, okay? It's not necessarily a fun decision, but there's very, very little things in life that you cannot change, okay? The decision to change that might not always be fun, but in the end, it might be a better decision, even if it, has, if it does bring its own pile of shit along with it, okay? But it's your life. So, your undecided is walking away from the company, they're still morons, they're still going on, everybody there is getting heart attacks, going on sick leave and going crazy, that company ain't going to last, okay? So, who cares? Johan is now at a company that is making him very happy, you know, they're, they're not crazy lunatic people, but there's a stress, stress factor. I don't see Johan, okay? This is a lot of uh, stress on our uh, relationship, the fact that he's in North Carolina five days and only at home on weekends, right? That's another stress factor. However, that is a decision we made, and that is something that we can have to, like, we could cope with that. We could not cope with the, dis with the place that he was in, because I never saw him. They expected him to work, you know, <laughs> right through Christmas, right through New Year, right, right through Thanksgiving, weekends, um, Mondays, uh, Monday to Fridays, they wanted him to come in at 7 o'clock in the morning and leave at 8 o'clock at night. So I didn't see him either. Now at least I see him on a full weekend, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So your decisions... This is not a permanent decision. I mean, it's going to affect your second decision sometimes, but that can turn around. For instance, if you have a person in your life, a family member, okay, that you cut out of your life. You cut them out, but sometimes it's permanent and that's just the way it is, okay? And sometimes the fact that you cut a person out of your life that's always sponging off of you will actually teach that person to stand up for themselves and not be so dependent on you, okay? So that's just... I, I just talked about stress factors now to deal with those to start out with. Now we're talking... Now, you wanted to talk about uh, the, 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 what, the cortisol and the adrenaline. Tell them about that. So, <coughs> the two main stress hormones in your body are cortisol and adrenaline. Well, adrenaline, noradrenaline, same as epinephrine, or epinephrine if you're in North America. The rest of the world is adrenaline. Uh, everybody knows what adrenaline is. Those are your short-term survival mechanisms. I mean, if you're in a situation where you have to run for your life, it'll make sure that you have the energy to do that, to get away and live <coughs> another day. Mm -hmm. But your body was not made, as Marina pointed out, to be constantly stressed because eventually something breaks. Uh, now, I just, cortisol is an especially nasty one because not only is that the one that's associated with a pot belly or abdominal obesity and all kinds of nice things, uh, in the long term, cortisol actually rewires your brain. It makes you less able to experience pleasure. Mm -hmm. And it's a permanent thing. It's so, not so, reversible. So, well. Isn't that the chemical change it that can happens? Be but I mean, it, it don't, you don't get like that overnight. And okay. there's no fix to go get better again overnight. Okay. It's a process. Okay. So, on the but one it hand, the, the you chemistry, have this little. Yes, right? it does. Right. So, imagine this little man that's keeping track of all the stresses you've been through and he demands a reward. But here you are now unable to experience the reward. Okay? Mm -hmm. It diminishes your ability to enjoy stuff. I mean, now you've got a problem. How do you please that little man now? Mm -hmm. So if you've waited too long, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the road. That road goes straight to addictions because if you can't derive joy, joy from normal things anymore, uh, then you have, well, your brain will want something somewhere. Maybe food, gambling, mm -hmm. my favorite one, but I'm not one of those, sex addiction, uh, <laughs> porn alcoholism, addiction, porn, all kinds of addictions. Yeah, food addiction, um, alcoholism, uh, drug addiction, um, shopping, shopping, gambling, yeah, all, all of those things, things okay. Uh, your brain wants a cheap thrill, or I mean an easy 
short term quick thrill. You want that dopamine boost. Okay. Yeah, the dopamine is the thing that makes you feel good. Remember I was talking yeah, to you about... It provides the drive, the yeah, go, the, the, the feeling good. Yeah, okay. So yeah. if you, um, for instance, say I, I love chocolate cake, right? So if, I, if chocolate cake gives me pleasure, okay, but <clears throat> I start going down a hill where I am now depressed and everything, then instead of eating a slice of chocolate cake, it doesn't do anything for me, so I'll keep on eating chocolate cake. I'll keep on eating it, expecting that I knew, you know, before I would have a slice of chocolate cake and it would make me feel good. Now I have two slices of chocolate cake, and it's like, it's not giving me the joy. So what, what now? So I eat more chocolate cake. And, I eat, and in the end, it doesn't do anything. So now I know chocolate cake doesn't work, but your body needs something to make it feel good. So now you go in, in search of that different thing, because chocolate cake's not doing it anymore. And chances are you're not going to stop eating the chocolate cake because you're going to keep on searching for that thing that bring you, brings you pleasure. But now you have to go to something else, right? So um, the next thing could be, and for me, it would never be alcohol and drugs, okay? So say I would be an addictive type of personality, chances are it would be porn or shopping, okay? Shopping or porn. Now, <coughs> um, if, if you know how uh, that, that saying that women have of uh, uh, shopping is as good as a holiday or something, you know, you go and you buy something. And I was there at one point. You remember when YouTube just started and everybody was doing their haul videos and their review videos and everybody else would run like more on and buy all that stuff. And you know, in the beginning, it was like, I want to try this, I want to try this and blah, blah, blah. And like a lot of the YouTubers that's been kind of addicted by this YouTube uh, thing going on and everybody goes and buys, out, buys everything, I would bring stuff home, look at it, and then all of a sudden it's like, well... I'm not feeling all that joyful anymore, <laughs> okay? So the shopping didn't bring you joy. In the, you know, when you go out and you buy something, you're supposed to feel good about something, okay? So when something doesn't make you feel good, then you stop it. So I, didn't, I don't do the whole videos, and I don't buy everything that everybody says anymore. I just buy what I want. But the thing is, for me, you know, that most probably that would have been my addictions. Would have been, it wouldn't have been food, I don't think, because I have my fear of puking. wouldn't have been drugs and alcohol, my fear of puking. But most probably porn or... Um, shopping so okay so we were saying we were talking about what did we go before we i went on this rant okay the addiction yeah well the fact that you want those that dopamine surge that yes. feel good thing something to make something to make you feel good okay but if your brain has been desensitized to dopamine mm. by all the stress i mean you're not going to be happy like you pointed as you pointed out to a slice of chocolate cake that slice of chocolate cake is not going to pay for three months worth of crap that you had to swallow at work or so wherever you're going to do something yeah. big time yeah and might be an eating binge mm -hmm. might be something more directly i mean there is are some very well-known substances they're not legal, but they boost the dopamine levels in your brain really well. Like? Cocaine mm -hmm. and amphetamines, meth. And very, a lot of people very, think very they good. won't go there, okay? But you've never, you, you can't say, oh, God, no, I'll never do that. Okay? I've never done any We've of that. We've never done any of that but shit. But I can quite imagine that your brain, that little man, there's mm -hmm. no saying no to him when he gets to that point of now he has to have. Because mm -hmm. he's in your subconscious. He's not in your conscious it's thinking not, mind. It's not a reasonable part of your brain. You can't reason with it. Yeah, it's like your rep reptilian brain. The person, the, the, the selfish wanting brain kind of thing. Okay? So, <laughs> for everybody who is uh, always looking at people with addictions as, oh, they have no control, has nothing to do with it. Okay? By the time they get to addiction, they don't get up one day and for the kicks go, oh, hell yeah, I think I should try some math. No logical, radical, um, rational thinking person, okay, is going to go out and say, oh yeah, I want to try some drugs, okay, you usually follow a path of depression, of, of anxiety, depression, stress, blah, 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 going downhill, downhill, and right at the end when you don't see it out anymore, you need relief of some kind, and that's how people get addicted to stuff, okay, okay, so, okay, so, but let's, let's just go on, since we started on addiction, let's just go on, because there's a lot of people that ask me about the aftermath, specifically of porn addiction, so, uh, in that case, as because it also, when you're overstimulating your dopamine receptors in your brain, they also become desensitized, right? Remember that, because when we do the addiction, you're going to see how, what it means. I mean, you're always going to need a bigger and a bigger, uh, 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 more and more stuff to give you the same kick. Okay. <clears throat> Which I spoke to you guys about in the TMN video too, right? Remember? 
So eventually, you're going to have to pay for that. You're going to have to pay for those mm -hmm. pleasurable moments in some way or another. Because if you just looking for more and more, mm -hmm. well, that's what addiction is. Mm -hmm. When you you have to quit, and then the, your brain will become more sensitive to dopamine again. Mm -hmm. But like we're talking about now, you have to go to cold turkey, totally off, nothing for one or two months, and then things will start getting better. It's the same way that sleeping pills work. Okay? There are also, <coughs> you can do a lot for your brain health through nutrition, through eating the right stuff, taking the right supplements and whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's a totally different thing. <laughs> okay. But the point being is, in order not to get there, you have to make sure that you get something nice, some little bit of pleasure every day for yourself. You have to have some satisfaction every day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about that some more and then we'll go into full blood into addictions. Okay. Talk to you.